I was born and raised in Malaysia. Hometown is Kuala Lumpur in the Far East. And uh, I was growing up, I came from a comfortable lifestyle and I chose to come to Honolulu, Hawaii. Went to school there in 1977 and became like a professional student. I grew up in a very small town in Arkansas. Matter of fact, I always joke about this. I said by the time I graduated high school, I had worked every job my hometown had to offer. So in order to uh, look for opportunity, um, most young men joined the military during those days. So that's what I did, you know, upon graduating high school. Matter of fact, I graduated on a Friday, went to basic training on a Monday, and been going ever since. I started out as a um, jet engine mechanic. From there, I retrained and became an air traffic controller. And then during my years as an air traffic controller, I later retrained and, and became a mechanic again. And so during the years, I was, right after I became a, a mechanic again, I got reassigned to Hawaii. Uh, while I was in Hawaii, I was fortunate enough to meet my wonderful wife, Ronnie. And we became best of friends and later went on and got married. And 21 years later, here I am. When I met Al, I just finished my uh, graduate studies. I attended University of Hawaii at Manoa campus, and I worked in retail, on the retail side for a while. I became a store manager at one of the high-end retail stores uh, in Honolulu. And while there, um, I was told we need to transfer because Al was being relocated, and that happened to be California. And then once we started there, I became a store manager, and shortly after, they promoted me to district manager. I had five stores that I overseed in California. And he wanted to do more because he was still young. So I said, why don't you go to Hawaii, where we came from, and see whether maybe you should relocate there back again to Hawaii. When I went on that trip, see, Ronnie had given me one check in case of an emergency. Now I'm walking the beaches of Waikiki, and someone approached me, and they're telling me about a business opportunity. A business opportunity was the last thing on my mind. But I happened to show up that night, I pulled out my wallet, I wrote a check for $195. That was the beginning of something big for me because that was a multi-million dollar decision for me. Al joined a network marketing company. I had no problem understanding that, but what I had a problem with was he wanted me to quit my job the next day because he had joined the business and he wanted me to be his partner. Six months later, I had left the military, Ronnie left her job, and we have never worked for anyone since. But I just felt as though also that if we both were on the same page, moving in the same direction, it would be much easier to get to where we were going. I always showed a sense of urgency on getting things done. And, and I, I promoted up in the ranks in the military fairly quick, because I joined the military when I was 17 years old. I was a master sergeant by the time I was 24. And so I had been in a position of authority for many, many years. My last years I spent as a recruiter and also as a recruiting supervisor. And so we, we had a monthly goal every month. And every month we had to hit that goal in order to keep our job. And, and they didn't just send you back to the mainstream Air Force when you didn't produce. They made you a civilian. And so I took some of those same things right over into what I was doing in my network marketing career. I treat it like a big, big business. I show a sense of urgency on getting things done. And I instilled that in all the people that I work with. You know, I instill my work ethics in them. Initially, I would want to follow Al everywhere. Whenever he went to any appointments and things like that, I wanted to be right there. So then Al made me realize, Ronnie, when, when I go to an appointment, you would stay back and then you can do other parts of the business whereby you can make phone calls, you can do follow-ups and create new appointments and to see how the business is going along for each of our team. So that made, made very, very much sense in regards to growing our business and that's how we grew our business very fast. And all of a sudden, real estate fell in our hands. The real estate company was based on a networking concept and to me that was incredible. That year we earned about 218000 in income. The, the following year coming in 06, we did about 1.3 million. And then we went on the following year and did about 1.1 million in income. Then all of a sudden the real estate market turned. You know, what we thought was the best business we ever could have been in turned out to be the worst business we ever could be in. 
But along the way, we still stayed positive behind that. And you know, and, and someone had been chasing me about this opportunity. FDI for about six months and I never would look at it. So I contacted my friend back and said, I don't care what you're doing, as long as it's legal, count me in, I'll be there on Tuesday night. So that was the beginning. So I, I came back on a Tuesday night, which was October the 10th. I showed up in Rancho Cucamonga and couldn't wait to get started. So we knew our work ethics between Al and myself, that we were going to do well, but um, in a sense we didn't realize uh, what this business was going to be about. I just knew that the next business had to be network marketing too, because we just left the first two. We knew that we had to show a sense of urgency on getting position and get some cash flow coming quickly. And so that's why, you know, we, we took off at the starting gate, just really going at it. And even today we're going at it like no tomorrow because, you know, I truly believe there may never be another opportunity as great as this one. And I want to take full advantage of it. It's not about who has the most superior knowledge. It's always about who can build the biggest organization. All we need to do is just focus on our business and do whatever it takes to grow our business and keep our team excited and motivated, and we ultimately all get what we want. You know, Al always talks about once you've been stretched, you can never go back to the original, original way it used to be. We've been making a strong six-figure income for a long time. So it's no longer a six-figure, it's going to be a seven-figure income monthly, not just yearly, but that's our goal, because we know it, it, it's going to happen. If you believe in what you're doing, if you have a passion for what you're doing, the rest is easy. The reality is, is that FDI has been a life-changing event for the two of us, and I know it's only going to get better from this point on.